Welcome to another painting tutorial. In this one, we're going to look at the Ogre Kingdom's lead belchers. Uh, and I painted these guys up at the same time as I did the iron blaster, so it's going to be very similar to that, but you may not have that unit, so you want to check out this. Also, there's obviously a lot more ogres, and so you'll see the process I go through for the ogres. So here's the, the full set of them that I did at once. Uh, so I did eight. Uh, the idea there is that uh, it'll help me get more guys on the tabletop and do a batch of them. I had eight lead belchers models uh, all assembled and uh, so here's the paints I used um, and I'll show you each individual set so this image will be on my website uh, my blog which will be linked below and uh, you can save that or whatever on your computer and reference it uh, later so the skin uh, basically you got the rat skin flesh uh, Reichland flesh shade Bestigore flesh and Ungore flesh, so it's not quite the same flesh tones as the um, as human flesh, so uh, it'll look a little bit different. Uh, any bones and tusks and that sort of thing on these models, so just the teeth I think on this guy, um, so the Xandri dust sort of uh, setup there. Um, any leather or straps, which includes the uh, the, the boots down here, um, the belt and some stuff on the the, the miscellaneous things there. We've got the steel lead and drab sort of setup. Um, so stone, so these guys usually have some earrings or whatever, they're stone bits. Uh, they might have them on their belts or whatever. Not a lot, so just quick sort of grays there. Um, any metal bits, so obviously there's some rust as well, so that's kind of the orangey colors, but uh, the lead belcher, Newland oil, un uh, iron breaker. Now that's not the, the big cannons, I did those more of a, a bronze sort of color there. And uh, the other thing to mention is that the... the uh, the var variegated or whatever, the, the bluish tones there are going to be with those stegodon uh, greens. Cloth, so these, uh, my Ogre Kingdoms, I've done all the pants with blue uh, just to sort of keep a unified look. Um, wood, using the dryad bark sort of colors there. And the nobbler skin, um, it's just kind of a pale green. Uh, you could use the other pale greens, um, this all depends on how you want them to look. All right, now we're going to move into the sort of fast forward uh, look at the guys here. So doing the Reckland flesh shade wash there. So that's after doing my base coat. Um, so I've just put a nice heavy coat of that on and I'm going to try to cover all the model. And uh, I'm only going to be showing one ogre as I go through these, but obviously the same thing is just repeated eight times. Um, this video, this part of the video showing just one ogre is 10 minutes at four times speed. Um, so obviously if I multiplied that by eight, that'd be way too long. So Warplock Bronze, uh, so the rhyme and reason here is just that I'm trying to paint some of the big areas that are sort of hidden inside the model, maybe some overlap of other things, and that way I don't have to touch things up later. So uh, for example, there's some leather strapping over some of these, so I'm going to do that later. Um, as well, some of this might get on the, the flesh, so I want to make sure that uh, I don't uh, or I, that I do the highlights, I can I can touch that up later. And so I'm painting straight out of the pot. Um, sometimes that can be a bit uh, too thick, uh, so you might want to use a wet palette or um, one of the GW palettes. Um, but uh, there you go. So I'm actually using a Reaper paint here for the base coat for the metals, and that's the rust color. So this is mahogany um, red or brown. Um, you'd probably want sort of a reddish brown from the GW range, which might be something like Rhinox Hide, um, just to get the same look that I'm doing here. And so what I do is I paint it the reddish color, and then I kind of give it an overbrush, dry brush of silver, just to give it kind of a rusted look. And that's just to get my ogres um, maybe looking a little bit different than the rest of my army, and also to uh, make it uh, make them look a bit unique, not rest of the army, to make them that army look unique on itself. So again I'm using another Reaper paint for the pants because I started my other ogres with this. So this is a navy color. The GW one is just fine. I'm just trying to uh, keep my colors consistent here. And uh, as you can see most of the big areas of the model are going to be covered after this. It'll just be some of the leather. And I think I'm painting that now. So the, the leather bits on the gun there, there's some straps around it, um, the belt, and the shoes are kind of the main the main bits. And for some reason this takes forever, just because I'm trying to 
make sure that I don't paint over top of other things. Oh, he's got a eye patch on there. And as you get to the smaller areas, they actually take longer because you're using a smaller brush and you have to be more careful. That's just something to, to make note of. Um, some people like to use uh, kind of glaze colors, uh, get the one the model kind of all one color and then just use those to tint things. I find that gives a bit of a flat color and I, I don't really like that as much, but I do see the benefit of doing it that way. Um, again, using a reaper paint here for the wood, so this is wood stained brown, um, the dryad bark would be very, very similar to this. And that's just for that the barrel there and some of the shafts of the spears inside the, the gun. Uh, I didn't catch which one that was. Oh, that's the, um, this. so this is a carrot top brown or something like that. It's another Reaper uh, paint. So you could use one of the, the GW oranges there, kind of a, a brownish orange. Um, and that was to get my red hair on the beard. So all my guys have red hair. And painting the nobbler now. Using different paint ranges is fine. Um, they're mostly compatible with each other. Uh, and, you know, if you use uh, Vallejo or Reaper or GW or Privateer Press, they all have sort of equivalent ones. The the one suggestion is that you stick with the colors uh, throughout your your whole army. Um, and the reason for that is just that you get a uniform look. You know, so your reds look the same, your blues look the same. They'll all be a little a little bit different, but uh, you know. Your technique, when you put the washes on, how you how you do your highlights, that'll give slightly different looks to things. So I did the Agrax Earthshade there on the bronze. Now I'm highlighting it up with uh, another uh, metallic there. I'm not sure which one I showed, but the warp lock bronze sort of a look. And then uh, I'll be doing the um, the uh, blue green color later. So shield brown, that's the reaper color again, so that um, highlighting on there. And any of the wood. This sort of middle highlight, um, it takes probably one of the longer ones uh, in general, just because you're painting almost every surface, uh, but carefully. Uh, highlighting up the middle layer of the leather. Um, got chestnut brown there. And what's that going to be? Oh, I think I missed some stuff that needs to be silver. So the ends of those spears there. It's touching up some stuff there. And the bands on the... the it's been a while since I actually did this, so I'm, I've forgotten a little bit of the stuff. It's Mephist on red, so I'm doing the fire, I believe, on the... Uh, yeah, so this, this, some of the nobblers have fire things there. Rust brown, so this is a great reaper paint. Um, it's, it's it's like basically the perfect rust color. Uh, GW doesn't have one that's quite equivalent, but you could mix up some orange and brown, or even just use um, one of the oranges, stippling it on uh, over top of a brownish color, and you, you get a very similar effect. Okay. I've been here, so hopefully, okay, working on the nobbler, I think. Driftwood brown now for the highlights on any of the wood bits. Um, again, so on the uh, so shafts of spears and stuff. Okay, so Sotec green, that's what I used for the... Uh, the oxidizing color on the the bronze. I don't know if people actually made cannons out of bronze, but I really like this uh, the shaded there with the, the the greens. It just adds a bit of color that you wouldn't otherwise get on a model. And when you start doing that, I really liked it, and then realized that it's actually quite simple. You just water down your paints and paint it directly into the areas that you want, like you would a wash. Um, and just make sure you don't get it up on uh, too many of the flat surfaces. And it's very, very simple and a very nice effect. Okay, so highlighting up some of the skin areas there. So uh, saving this to near the end because of all the other colors. I can sort of touch things up as I do this. And that's one of the reasons why I do the order the way I do. Um, any areas that I might have messed up and painted on the wrong side, 
uh, I can now touch up with a highlight even if it goes a bit into the shadows um, that's fine because you're doing another highlight on top something has to be stone colors uh, I did there and now doing some more highlights so this is rosy skin um, from the Reaper brand, uh, range but uh, the the beast the beastman flesh would be just fine okay so using uh, Iron Breaker now, sort of edge highlighting on the silver bits and uh, any areas that were metal that have already had the rust color. So this is just getting the edges kind of scratching through the rust, that's the, the idea. Highlighting up the pants now. So again this is the major surface area so I'm just trying to avoid any of the creases um, but trying to get every other surface except for the deep crevices on things. And the final highlight of that will just be sort of the edge on the pan. Okay, now I think that's basically it. So you have a little bit of rotating view. I'll have some still images just after this so you can get some nice close-ups. But uh, that gives you an idea of what the unit will look like. Nice blues in there and those uh, green blues on the guns. Um, really, really like how the ogres kind of look. I, I wish I could have had more time to paint the rest of my ogres, uh, but I'll have to get around to doing that. So yeah, some still images coming after, after this, and uh, make sure you leave some comments in the description, or in the uh, comments area below. If you have any questions, concerns, uh, wondering about some stuff, check that out. If you're wondering about the... Um, uh, paints I used, uh, the still images will be on my blog. Alright, so uh, a couple uh, images here showing the process, a um, bit up close, this sort of stuff, and I'll show you the finished product. Okay, so there's the, the, uh, the uh, whatever cart thing that I did at the same time. Okay, mental blank, sorry. Okay, so just looking around, um, I also added some of the tufts uh, at the very end there. Um, like the way they look, especially on these uh, big bases, really brings out some of the scale of these guys. And uh, typically, I think I would bring these guys in groups of four, so I don't really have to worry about them ranking up too well. Um, but uh, they don't really rank. Two, uh, two layers deep because of the cannons. I suppose if I had positioned them a bit better on the bases they might have, but uh, there we are. Hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Uh, be sure to check out my blog. It's like watching paintdry.blogspot.com. Subscribe and uh, leave me a comment if you have any suggestions or requests for future tutorials.